What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG on the YouTube.com. Down there, we like magic. I would hope that you know by now. <laughs> Today, as usual, got a deck tech for you. No different than most other days, but this one's a little special. This one is for my budget players, my super strict budget players. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about mono green fat dudes. And if anybody knows about fat dudes, it's me, and that probably came out wrong. I'm going to run with it anyway. Screw it. This is basically a mono green ramp deck that plays a bunch of huge dudes at the top end of the curve, and it's only going to cost us about $3.50 sense when all is said and done. The deck plays no rares or mythics. It's all commons and uncommons. Super easy to put together and not very complicated, to be honest with you. So let's go ahead and take a look at this deck. But first, quick note for some of my like longtime viewers and subscribers. At the end of my last video, Red White Humans, I asked you what decks you'd want to see out of like six different decks. And at the time of this recording, there's like 500 comments on the video. So you all cared very much. About all of these decks. So stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to give you the standings for those six decks and the order that we're going to do them in. So stick around. You'll get to see your favorite deck soon. I promise. Also like the video if you enjoyed this video. You're supposed to tell people that at the beginning of the video, but I never do. So here, like the video. Anyway, let's talk about this actual deck here. We're going to play a bunch of creatures, like mostly creatures and just like three non-creature cards in the deck. So let me go ahead and start telling you about those. We'll talk about the four copies of Ovenwald Captive here first. Now, Ovenwald Captive is a two drop that taps for mana. That is 90% of the reason that we're playing him. He's one of two play sets of two drops that we're playing that just tap for mana. So that is ostensibly the main reason for him being in the deck. But this guy has a double use. You know, when we actually get all the mana that we're trying to get in the deck, he too can become a huge creature, which I like. I like that a ramp guy that we play early and then taps for mana, gets our big guys out, has a dual purpose. And actually, when we get to the mana that we're trying to get to, he's not completely useless anymore you know he becomes a big dude in his own right and that can actually be really really nice a lot of the time plus he's a wolf and wolves are cool we're also going to play four copies of druid of the cow right here druid of the cow doesn't look quite as good as captive you know because it can't ever transform or anything but it's kind of important because its toughness is above shock and i've lost many a wolf to a shock but you can't lose a druid of the cow to one and that can actually be really super important but again the primary reason we're playing this lady is that she taps for a green mana and she only costs two so you know i want like eight different tap for mana creatures in the deck so we'll definitely play her we're gonna play another two drop creature that can ramp us but doesn't actually tap for mana we're gonna play a four of primal druid in the deck which started off as a three of but became a four of because i wanted to see it as early as possible all the time. There's a bunch of aggro in this format right now, and I like Primal Druid because, unlike Druid of the Cow, you know, Druid of the Cow we have to tap so it can't block the next turn, obviously. This we always leave up to block, and if they attack with a big enough creature, then we can basically chump block and sacrifice it in a way to go and ramp us one land, which is exactly what we want, you know? This can thin our deck, get us ahead one land early in the game. All those things are what we want in this ramp deck. So I like it a lot. It's a good early game speed bump against all the aggro decks so they just don't completely demolish us by turn four or five. We really don't want that, and Primal Druid is a great way to sort of slow them down while also ramping us, so he gets all four copies. We're going to play four copies of Eyeless Watcher in the deck, which is basically our transition piece, you know. If we go Druid of the Cow or Ovenwald Captive on turn two, then turn three we can go Eyeless Watcher. And then on turn four we can create seven mana and we can actually miss our land drop and still create six mana, which is awesome. We're playing a bunch of six and seven drops and stuff in the deck. So we want to be able to get there as quickly as possible and I've sort of restricted myself from using rares or anything. So Eyeless Watcher is probably the best way we can do it. It's also not really horrible late when you top deck it because it'll at least create three creatures for you. That's like instant board presence right there. So not bad at all and helps ramp our mana. So definitely going to play it so that we can get it on turn three and lead to some really glorious turn four stuff. Now before we get to the really big creatures in the deck that form the whole purpose of what we're doing, I'm going to stop off and talk about yet another two drop, but this one doesn't ramp us in any way, I just think it's important to play. We're going to play four copies of Lambholt Pacifist in the deck, because talk about a speed bump on turn two. This can not only block pretty profitably in the early game, but it can also like take down smaller creatures, you know, like Thraven Inspector, Inventor's Apprentice, a lot of stuff is getting played right now at the one and two drop slot, and this can block a lot of that stuff and kill it or at the very least trade with it and later on in the game you know and i say later like turn four or five we can start attacking with this pretty easily and if it transforms it gets even bigger it's a two mana four four so like 
Yes to all of Lampold Pass, because I think it's another good transition piece. It's another good piece to like keep them off of our back in the early game. And once we play any of our big creatures, it can start attacking too. So for just a two-mana investment, I think Pacifist is worth the four of. Now let's get to the big guys. We're going to start with five drop creatures, and we're going to play four copies of Ridge Scale Tusker in the deck. This card is actually very good, and if anybody's played it in like uh, Limited, you know, if anybody's played it in Draft, or if you got it in your seal, uh, seal pool for the pre-release, you know this card is actually a serious bomb and can sometimes be you know basically our verderous gear hole in the deck you know and if we go like for instance drew to the cow turn two turn three eyeless watcher turn four ridge scale tusker well we're getting a bunch of counters you know we're getting four plus one plus one counters and a five five which is sort of better than verderous gear hole some of the time you know we don't get the choice of where to put the counters but we still get a bunch of counters and a huge guy. So Rich Hill Tusker is great when you get him on curve or when you get him late in the game. This can be a seriously game-breaking, you know, top deck on turn 10. <laughs> so Rich Hill Tusker is just good at any point of the game. If you play him on turn four, he's crazy. And even if you draw him late, he's a spectacular card. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reserve the play set for him, definitely. Card is crazy. There's another five drop though. I'm gonna just play two copies of Arborback Stomper in the main, and I'm gonna put the other two copies in the board because this is very, very good against aggro. If we can get to turn four with a Druid of the Cow out or an Ovalmall captive or something, then we can play this guy, gain five life, and put a huge dude on board that outclasses a lot of their guys. So, you know, I'm just gonna play the two of in the main because I think Tusker is just better, and I don't want to have ten cards or eight cards or whatever at five drops. So I think the Tusker is just slightly better and so I'm going to prioritize it, but I'm still going to play those two stompers in the sideboard to finish off the playset because against aggro, this thing is just really, really good. It gets us right back in the game, attacks very well and blocks super well. It can take out pretty much anything they're playing. A good thing to note before I move on about these five drops and up from now on is that none of them can be taken out by Fatal Push, which is incredibly important and they can't be taken out except for Stomper. They can't be taken out by um, grasp of darkness but our ridge scale can't and our other two creatures can't so that matters sometimes too of course you still got to look out for unlicensed disintegration and occasionally people play like murder and stuff so look out for those but the fact that most of our creature base are all the ones we care about the most are above fatal push is actually really important so i just wanted to point that out before we move on but i am going to move on <laughs> to our six drops here we're going to play four copies of deathless behemoth <laughs> which i love love the name of this card this thing has vigilance and it's got special synergy with eyeless watcher you know if we have a deathless behemoth in our graveyard and we play an eyeless watcher we can just go ahead and sacrifice both of those scions and get this guy back in our hand and honestly a 6-6 vigilance right now is very good because <laughs> it can attack into most boards and survive or kill a big creature or something on blocks and still stay up to block the next turn so like Deathless Behemoth is actually pretty stupid for an uncommon right now, and since I've relegated myself to only commons and uncommons, I think it's maybe the best uncommon six drop that we can play in this deck. So it's actually been really, really good because Vigilance is a better ability, especially on big creatures, than you might think it is, and the ability to get it back and have that little bit of resilience is very, very important. And to finish off the creatures, we're going to play three seven drops in the deck, but, you know, we've got like 16 different things that ramp us <laughs> in the early game, so... I think we can play a few seven drops here. It's not like we're trying, trying to get to Ulamog or anything. So we're going to play three copies of Plated Crusher in the deck. And I got to tell you, I freaking love this guy. <laughs> this guy's really, really good. Seven mana actually isn't too much to ask for this deck. Like I said, we can make it on turn four sometimes. And in the circumstances where you do get a turn four Plated Crusher, you're probably going to win. Like, that's the best chance this deck has of winning the game against a bunch of the stuff in the format right now. And sometimes a 7-6 Plated Crusher on turn four is just completely insurmountable depending on the start that your opponent got. So, you know, things like green-black counters can take it down on blocks and stuff, but if they got a poor or slow start, then Plated Crusher is just insane on turn four against those and pretty much every other deck in the format. Hexproof is a crazy ability right now because everyone's running a bunch of removal no matter what deck they're playing against. So Hexproof is really, really good. Six Toughness is awesome. Seven Power is awesome. So, and Trample is also pretty good right now because they can't just chump block it with their small dudes. So, like, everything that this thing does is actually pretty impressive, and it's been a fairly good card. I want to see it all the time. So, Plated Crusher has actually really impressed me, and it'll, it'll be the card that wins you the game more than any other. 
Now, the only non-creature card I'm going to play in the deck is the three copies of Prey Upon. Now, you might be thinking that this deserves a four of. We are going to extend the playset to the sideboard. There is the final copy of it in the sideboard, but I actually didn't want to see it all the time because you don't want to see it until later on in the game, turn five, turn six, where you've already got a big dude out. Like, obviously, we're not going to be doing too much fighting with our Druid of the Cow, you know, but I do think it's one of the best things we have to fight. And there's other stuff in the format. Here's some things, but I'd rather our fight card just take one mana to cast. That way, let's say we can produce six mana on turn four because we played Eyeless Watcher on turn three. Well, we can play like a Ridgecale Tusker and still have mana to Prey Upon, which can sometimes be very, very important. So I went with Prey Upon strictly because of the mana cost. Here are the lands in the deck. I'm just going to play 24 Forest. That keeps it cheap, you know. I don't feel like we have to play any other non-basics. Like, we could play... The Blighted green card, um, which, you know, gets two lands when we sack it. But I just don't think it's entirely necessary, you know. And I don't think it's important to play more than 24 lands either. Like I said, we have 16 different cards that ramp us. And it's, again, not like we're trying to get to Ulamog. We're just trying to get to seven. So I just don't think we have to play a bunch of lands. 24 has been right for me. And here's the sideboard. We're trying to do a bunch of work against Heart of Kirin in the deck because we absolutely hate it. So Takedown is mostly for Heart of Kirin, just the one mana. Same thing with Natural State, just the one mana. Take out a Heart of Kirin. Prey Upon will finish off the playset as previously stated. Natural Obsolescence is mostly there against Scrap Heap Scrounger. That's mostly the reason people play that in sideboards. Um, Pulse of Murasa is in there against all the removal in the format, especially Mardu Vehicles, because that deck hits fast and blows up all of our best guys pretty easily with um, Unlicensed Disintegration. So Pulse can put six more back on our clock and get our big dude back. So that can be really, really important. Um, again, we're going to finish off the playset of Arbiback Stomper, and we're going to finish off the playset of Plated Crusher, because there's some games where if we if we play it, we win the games. And here are your power rankings right here. A final score of just 50, which obviously isn't the highest score ever, but we're spending $3.50, and we're not playing any rares. So it's like... What do you want? You know, just for a $5 deck, actually, I say it's $350, but it's actually like $330 on TCG Player, I believe, is what my card ended up being. So um, it's even less than that, you know. For a three-something dollar deck, this is actually kind of impressive and can do a little work. I don't think that you're going to, like, go in and just crush FNM with this deck or anything, especially if there are people playing, like, Marty Vehicles, Green Black Counters and stuff. We do have hard times against some of the better decks in the format. Don't get me wrong, but if you're just playing with your buddies or if your LGS has a slightly lower sort of, you know, uh, play pool, like they don't play a bunch of $400 decks, then you can actually have a little bit of success with this. And, again, against nearly anything, if you drop turn four plated crusher you're in the money so try this thing out it's super straightforward very easy to understand if you're newer to the game and if you don't have a whole lot of money in your pocket this deck costs less than a booster pack to build so give it a shot even if you're an experienced player it's only four bucks and or less so try it out let me know how you feel about it in the comments i'm tapped out for now what are we doing next time as promised i would get to all six of these decks you guys voted on. Well, first place was definitely Blue Red Zombies, and I'm happy for that because that's actually the deck I wanted to do most. This deck, as a lot of people in the comments of Red White Humans have pointed out, this deck actually has a lot of play against the big three decks right now. Green Black Counters, Mardu Vehicles, Jeskai Sahili. The deck actually does pretty well against literally all three of those decks, and it's only like $150, which is half the price of those decks. So I can't wait to show that one to you. Blue Red Zombies is actually pretty stinking dope. So I'm going to be doing that one next. That's the one you voted on. Now, as far as number two, number two was Grixis Tower, which I'm also pretty happy about because this deck is also good against nearly everything in the form. Format, and it's fairly cheap. It's only about 200 to build the Grixis Dynavolt Tower deck, and I can't wait to bring that one to you either. So those are the top two that you voted on, which I was a little surprised about. Honestly, I figured that a budget deck would win the day as far as the number one, but it did come in third. A budget deck known as $20 Blue White Fog came in third, and there was actually a point where it was threatening first place, but we're going to do Blue White Fog here in the next week or so because that was another one that was very, very popular, and that deck is just... Good old-fashioned quirky fun, and it's really, really cheap, so that one's coming soon, too. As far as the bottom three, number four was Mono Black Aggro. A lot of people wanted that deck, too. And then um, Black Red Aggro, number five, just about 35 bucks to build that deck. And then $15 Green Red Aggro was all the way at the bottom, but I'm still going to bring it to you in the next two or three weeks here. So here's the order of operations for the next two weeks, and I might, again, slip another budget deck or something in there just because I feel like it, and it's my channel. And maybe 
maybe if I want to talk about something else, you know, who knows? Uh, Modern Master spoilers will be coming soon, and Amon Ket spoilers will be right on their heels. So, I'm going to be talking about all things magic related, plus these six decks coming up. So, you know, check all that stuff out and sub if you're new so that you get that. Also, at the end of the video, I wanted to send a shout out to my buddy Aaron Kane from Aaron Kane Custom Deck Boxes. He sent me this. I'm going to show this to you. Isn't this sweet? He sent me this custom SBMTG um, decks bo deck box the other day, and it's really, really nice, too. It's got the uh, slide top, vel uh, uh, felt inside, so you don't mess your cards up. It's got the divider that actually has a little, like, indention in it so that you can actually get to your cards. That's all. That's always nice. You know, it's nicely crafted. It's good wood, so, and he sent me this without me asking or anything. You know, there was no letter of sponsorship or anything. He's not paying me. I'm not paying him. Just like Good old fashioned, hey, I enjoy your channel. Here's a custom deck box. So I'll return the favor, you know, if you if you think that this looks cool. And again, it's really, really well made. Go to Aaron Kane, uh, Aaron Kane Custom Deck Boxes.com and check his stuff out. The guy obviously does really good work, and this was super nice of him. So go check out his website and see what you can find there because he's obviously an incredibly nice guy, and I want to make sure he gets paid for all the obviously very good work that he does. Anyway, I'm Deb from SBMTG. If you enjoyed the video, like it. I'll tell you that again. Sub if you're new and make sure you hit that bell so you get the notifications when I put out deck text. And again, spoilers coming out soon. You want notes for that too. So anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching my wizards.